the nerve complex tachycardia is basically first we're talking about the atrial fibrillation it is an irregularly irregular rate and rhythm um so with no discrete no discrete p waves like no um specific p waves that we can identify on um ecg but like as you see here it's between every uh, qrs complex like there is no specific um exact p wave that we can see that's why it's called irregular irregular and there is no discrete p waves the common risk factor Factors for atrial fibrillations um, include uh, hypertension and coronary artery disease. Uh, it may uh, predispose to thromboembolic events because there is no uh, proper contraction of the atria. So um, that means um, an emboli can move um, really fast and freely to other parts of the body. Um, it particularly that may cause a stroke uh, for the management it's rate and rhythm control because it's in irregularity in the rate and in the rhythm so um, also we can use cardioversion uh, while the definite treatment is the ablation of pulmonary vein ostia uh, so basically it's the ostia is like the opening of the pulmonary veins because we know that the pulmonary veins open in the um, atrium in the left atrium or we can just ablate the left atrial appendage so if you take a look at this image then here is the left atrial appendage is right over here so it's this small um, outward deviation of the um, atrium so uh, we can also consider anticoagulation because now we know that we have an increased risk of thromboembolic events and that is based on the um, stroke risk because we're having we may have a, a stroke so for the um, ECG findings, as you can see, that um, there are like uh, cool, nice uh, QRS complexes, but um, the, the P wave is just not there in the proper way. Uh, but the PR interval does not equal the PR interval for um, each beat. So that's why it's regularly irregular. Well, um, what we have also is the um, multi focal atrial tachycardia so it's also an irregularly irregular rate and rhythm as we said with at least three distinct p morphologies like so we're going to have three different shapes of the p wave uh, and that is due to multiple ectopic foci in the atria so this is an ecg and this is the first p wave that we see this is the second one and this is the third fourth and fifth so uh we need to find at least three different um shapes or um looks of the p wave to consider it as multifocal atrial tachycardia it's um due because because there is um a ectopic foci more than one there are multiple in the atria so each one of those um, produces its own shape of the p wave it's associated with underlying conditions just like copd and pneumonia with heart failure as well so that's for multifocal atrial tachycardia for um, atrial flutter we have um, rapid succession of identical uh, consecutive atrial depolarization waves causing so tooth appearance of p waves so uh well we have very first thing it's rapid so if we take a look at this ecg then we can see each one of those uh words rapid there you go that's one two three four and it's really going um rapidly and then it's identical so this one looks like this one and this one as well and this one so yeah and then consecutive it just one by one by one um atrial depolarizations because it's between um each and qrs uh, and the other one so they are atrial depolarization and that that's why they um look like um so tooth appearance on the ecg uh we can treat it just like atrial fibrillation because um um it's uh irregularity in the uh depolarization of the atria so it's really similar to atrial fibrillation but we can use or not use like plus minus the catheter ablation of a region between the tricuspid annulus and inferior vena cava so um the tricuspid annulus okay so this is the tricuspid and um this is over here it should be an opening of the inferior um, of the superior vena cava so uh actually it should be the superior vena cava so it's not this one that should be the inferior so somewhere 
here, something here should be ablated if we are going with the ablation uh, option. So that's for atrial flutter. Uh, now for paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. It's most often due to re-entrant tract between atrium and ventricle. And it's most commonly in the AV node. Um, commonly presents with sudden onset palpitations, lightheadedness, and diaphoresis. So uh, what is happening is that there is um, an abnormal tract that is allowing the um, electrical pulses to go out and then come back to the same place so they're basically going in circle as we can see here so that is a re-entrant um uh was it re-entrant tract yes so this is basically a tract instead of just going from the sa node to the av node and then just um throughout the ventricles it goes around in the same place over and over again so that's the um supraventricular because it's supraventricular it's, it's happening in the atria so it's not in the ventricle that's why it's supraventricular and um what it's saying here is that uh commonly presents it comes as sudden set palpitations lightheadedness and diaphoresis uh and for the ecg this is how it looks like okay and then for the treatment, we need to terminate the re-entry rhythm by slowing the AV node. So because this is most commonly happens in the AV node, because the most um, common place for its occurrence is the AV node, and we know it's a slower than the SA node over here. So um, the best thing to do is that we need to terminate this end this re-entry with him by slowing the AV node conduction uh, through the vagal maneuvers or IV adenosine. And both of these maneuvers are um, management types. We can use at the emergency departments. Also, we can choose the educator curl um, cardioversion in case the patient is hemodynamically unstable. For example, if he's um, unable to be aroused or um, they just lose consciousness. So we know that they're... Um, not there with us that's how we can use the extracurricular diversion while the definitive treatment just to get rid of the whole thing is catheter ablation of the re-entry tract so we actually go in to the heart and um, ablate and end and finish the re-entry tract through catheter ablation that's for uh, preexismal supraventricular cardia and now for the wolf parkinson white syndrome so it is um the most common type of ventricular pre-excitation syndrome so this is um, an excitation that is happening before its time but it's the most common type of ventricular pre-excitation syndrome uh, it is an abnormal fast accessory conduction pathway from atria to the ventricle so first of all it's abnormal we know that second of all it's fast it's not like the av node it's not like really slowing anything so it's just fast and accessory conduction pathway uh it is um something that should not be there i said that before but it, it's it's just um accessory yeah not sure how to describe it but that's oh it's called bundle of kent okay so this is bundle of kent it bypasses the rate slowing IV node, so it doesn't allow the current to go through the AV node. It just bypasses the um, AV node. Let me see here. Okay, so this is the normal heart, and this is the SA node. It just goes, the, lets the current go to the AV node, and then from the AV node, it should go into the both ventricles like this but in our case in the wolf parkinson white syndrome then there is um we said um it was a pre-excitation syndrome so there is an abnormal fast accessory conduction pathway from atria to the ventricles and it's called bundle of kent it bypasses the right slowing av node and there you go this is the uh, sa node it doesn't go to the av just doesn't so we're gonna delete this and then it will go this way 
or this way anyhow is just reaching the ventricles um, down and up and then just going back so it's not going to the um, AV node so it's bypassing the AV node uh, the ventricles uh, partially depolarize earlier because this is fast and it's um, accessory so it should not be there so the ventricles have to respond to this current that's why they depolarize they contract a little bit um, earlier than they should so uh, that's why you can find the characteristic delta wave with widened QRS complex and shortened PR interval so for the delta wave okay so this is a delta wave so basically it's omitting the uh, angle that was supposed to be here now it's omitted because there is a really fast contraction before it's time of the left ventricle you know that the QRS is the um, uh, depolarization depolarization of ventricles and in this case we're saying that the ventricles are getting depolarized really fast so uh, we are just bypassing the whole process that they normally go through and that's how we have the delta wave we also have shorter um, PR interval because the PR interval should be between the P and the R that was supposed to be here now it's gone so the PR interval is just shorter than the uh, normal and there it says this this was supposed to be the normal length and this is the shortened PR length there you go so um, also it says that we can have a widened QRSL complex and that makes sense because normally um, it should be like this and that's the width of a QRS complex now we don't have that so we have a wider QRS complex there you go then we may that may result of course this uh, pre-excitation syndrome um, it may result in re entrenched circuit so um, it can happen um, uh, like a complication uh, developing a re-entry circuit uh, it leads to supraventricular tachycardia that will end up as supraventricular tachycardia because it's just now that we are having a new re-entry circuit that means it's supraventricular not in the ventricles anymore so the treatment is a procainamide and we need to avoid AV nodal blocking drugs because wolf parkinson syndrome um, the current is already bypassing and not going through the av node blocking that's why it's going way too fast so we actually need the av node to be there in order to treat it we need the av to slow down that current so if we're using a blocking drugs that we're that means we're making the problem even worse so we need to avoid the av nodal blocking drugs that should be it for this um yeah this is a accessory pathway conduction that doesn't go in the normal um uh pathway this is the abnormal accessory pathway um conduction okay and that's it that sh it should be fine okay for the ecgl we already talked about it and that's it